I mean, here's the thing about the NFL, and it's sad but true, but like the wives are in the first row and the girlfriends are three rows back. There is infidelity. What is that like for you to actually see behind the curtain? It's not so much like the men and the testosterone, it's more the women. I do wake up and think every day, like how can I make his life better? Like we're in a partnership. Landon, a breath of fresh air is on the podcast today. You are such an open book and like the perfect person to podcast with. Someone that I've wanted to podcast with for so long. So I'm so happy you're here all the way from Nashville, right? All the way. I mean, no, honestly, thank you. I'm not just, you know, saying this because I'm sitting here, but I, I followed you in the podcast. I saw you at Create and Cultivate. Um, you were, I mean, what, eight years ago? You yeah, were a guest a there and I was sitting in the audience. I had come in for that and I was like, oh, I really love this. I love her energy. And it's just been really fun to watch it all evolve and you have the kids and the brand. And of course, like I'm a huge fan of what you're putting out. So thank you. I'll it's just fun it. to be here. I mean, you just seem like I'll take you're it. A girl's no, girl. we're simpatico. <laughs> I feel yeah. like if I lived in Nashville, we would be sure for sure be making like margaritas. Yeah. It was well, almost like, Nashville. Yeah. Was yeah. it? It was yeah. almost, but because when we were moving from California, we, we looked and we actually flew out to Nashville, but our family, so much of them are still in San Diego. And I'm like, oh, the flights are yeah. still a little bit long from Nashville yeah. all the way back to California. Well, you know, Nashville and Austin are related. I They are related. Hundred I was like, is it the younger sister, or the older sister? Not sure, but they are. Yeah, they are Very totally similar. related. You guys have a little more, I don't want to call it like dirty, but you got a little <laughs> more grit. <laughs> well, then Nashville's it. a little more Southern polished. Speaking of grit, we want to tell your story because like you said off air, I think that your story maybe looks so glamorous to so many people, but I want to go back okay. to when you're young, you're in eighth grade. Yeah. When's I mean, even first- before that, I mean, I was raised by a single mom. Okay. So uh, now I think as a parent and as a mother, I- I'm just looking at her thinking about the sacrifice she made. And everything she gave up. I mean, she had me at 21. So she's walking away with a baby at like 22 years old. And to me, I I put myself in those shoes and I'm like, oh my gosh. So, so many, so much of my childhood was so happy. There was never, I don't remember a sad, you know, hard time because she just did such a great job of creating a life that appeared to be happy and perfect is perfectly she could make it with what she had and so a lot of things that I do now stem back from that and I think as I'm getting older I'm really diving in and just going to therapy and really like understanding who I am and how I tick and just um, not having a real relationship with my dad and all of those things and so I look back and like I eat a bowl of cereal every night at 10 o'clock at night and that's because my mom couldn't afford groceries and we had cereal so that is my comfort food So it's just kind of interesting. And from that created a little secret hideaway spot for my daughter and I in the pantry. And since she's been a little girl, that's where we talk about everything. Friend problems, school, boys, you name it, whatever's on her mind. So it's kind of our little thing. So now I'm like digging back into my life, like of all these little things that I do that I'm like, where did this come from? And it is just so much part of my story of how, you know, where I am today and the relationship I have with her. And so it's just kind of interesting to go back. But I totally agree with you that when you become a parent, you have this extreme empathy Mm -hmm. for your parents that you didn't have before you were a parent. And you start to realize that, whoa, wait, they didn't know everything. They They didn't have the tools to be perfect. How can you like project that onto them? And you just sort of like not feel sorry for them, but you just understand them more. Yeah, for sure. Empathy is huge. I feel like that's the one thing that I've really, really uh, learned to have more of. And I always thought I was pretty empathetic. I'm like a giver and someone that's just always doing and making everyone happy and making everyone feel welcome and loved on. And so just to kind of really see the depths of even my in-laws and my parents and like why they do the things they do, which is how they were raised. So it's interesting to be raising kids now and just really digging in because let's be honest, my kids have a very charmed life given how hard my husband and I have worked. So we're in this place now where we have one off to college and one about to be a junior in high school. I'm like, where does the grit come from? How am I going to give that to my kids when I'm giving them everything I didn't have? So it's it right now, it's like them having to struggle a little bit 
in like a, you know, upper middle class neighborhood and lifestyle. It's like hard. It's hard to like, they need that. I think every great success story and successful business and person and everything just had to go through, you know, shit to get to, you know, get through the <laughs> shit to get to the rainbow. And I'm just wondering how I give that. That's like my. We're, we are having these similar conversations. I can totally, what you're saying really resonates. You do want them to have that grit because it does give you an edge. Yeah. And how, how do you do that if you are trying to give them everything you didn't have? Yeah. It's a real mind fuck. What I've realized is it's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if yes. you don't. And you constantly feel guilty. Not even just giving the stuff, but like sometimes giving a little bit of tough love. Oh I feel yeah. Like tough love. People coddle people so much mm. nowadays. And I understand it doesn't come, it comes from a good place, but I think in the long run, it potentially does more damage than good. Yes. You have all these kind well, of like, everyone's getting a trophy every, I mean, the world is not nice. And so just using the way we were brought up and trying to instill that in our kids and give them those life lessons it's it's not easy at our house. I mean, my husband was raised by, um, you know, a Marine, four tours in Vietnam, like a cop. Different kind of guy. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I think he might have throw, thrown Steve through the drywall because he didn't say thank you at a sleepover. Like, he's not laying hands on my kids, but it's just like you're trying to really teach them how to like, you know, the world's not nice. Like, let me give you a little bit of that now before you leave. Yeah, I know. And this is a controversial statement, but I think even for boys, like I tell Lauren all the time and our son's only one, but I'm like, be careful babying this boy too much. Cause I see a lot of my guy friends that their moms is like, don't these... talk about me and my boy. Listen, oh, listen, some I of was my... just about to say, you're about to be <laughs> ganged don't up. Talk about me some and of my, my guy friends are still mold. on their mother's tit and I'm like, what's going on? And it, they, it creates this weird dynamic. I layer. sing him a song that says he's living with the mom for the rest of his life. <laughs> but I see, no, it's true. But I see these men and like, they still have these weird mommy issues and it makes it hard for them to like deal with women yeah. now later in life. And I'm yeah. like, I, so I listen, I understand like getting between a mother and a son is a very dicey proposition, but I'm always <laughs> like, Hey, be careful that you don't mm -hmm. like, you know, baby this guy too He's much. One. I've, I, I, <laughs> I've been <laughs> reminded constantly in raising our son that maybe I might've done that a little too much, but let me tell you something. I never understood my mother-in-law. I never understood a boy mom until I had a son. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, I mean, you know, I was like, these women are crazy and now I'm crazy. You know what I mean? And I I, I just can't get enough of him because it's, it's a wild thing to watch. And you, he's so little, it just turned a year. But like mine's 16 and driving and it's wild, y'all. Like it is a man living in our house and the shoulders are rounding, the facial hair, the voice. And I'm just over here like, and it's, <laughs> and it's unique for me and it's going to happen to you too. And I think we could be a very small percentage of people that are going to experience this but I am now falling in love with the same boy twice and not a lot of people get to do that and it's so fascinating because I I met my husband at 14 and like I'm watching that unfold again so like Luke's the same age as like around the time I met Steve huh. and it's just like this beautiful I know everything about this kid I change his diapers but I'm seeing my husband in him and it's just absolutely wild because gen genetics are wild. And so it's just like, it, it, just wait till you get there. And then it adds a whole nother layer. Cause now I'm like, me away from that because <laughs> when I saw you, when I was 12, he was the cutest kid. Yes. When you tell me that I'm like, Oh my God, I get to experience little Michael again. I know. Honestly, if someone was like, you have to choose between little Michael and the Michael now, I'd it would take me a while to that I'm not gonna lie, I would be like, yeah, but Fuck. the little Michael's gonna grow into the big Michael, you know. Let me tell you something. If a man said if I had to choose between you the grown <laughs> woman or you the little girl, we would be this, <laughs> this show we would be, be off. Over. Yeah, be over. I might choose you at twelve. I'm not joking. Well, I you think were the so cute. No, but the context being obviously we've known each other but you met your husband around the same time that we met was like eighth yes, grade. Yeah, but Lauren and I met when we were twelve years When's old. When's the yeah. first time you saw your husband? I was uh, I was picking up attendance cards in English class. I just moved cities and I met him and I was like, he's so cute. And he thought I had great legs walking back to the cafeteria. And here we are. We've been married 21 years. So so when you guys met, did you automatically start dating? Uh, no, I just I thought he was super cute. 
I no one liked me when I got there. I you I know, wonder it was like, why it was like get to the back, can't sit here. Very Forrest Gump, right? And uh, I I ended up one of my best friends to this day. I'm the godmother of her children. Was the girl that said you can't sit here. So it's just funny to think like how our lives have unfolded. I'm like, so now, you know, my goddaughter, I'm like, why don't you ask your mom how she treated me in the eighth grade? <laughs> so so you guys didn't start dating right away. Um, yeah, honestly, we did go to the eighth grade dance, which was like in May. And, you know, you start the school season in August. So it was just towards the end of that school year. But yeah, and we made out in front of the garbage can before the eighth grade trip to Disney World, you know. I, All I of it. Le- Michael g- got kicked off the eighth grade trip to Disney World, but like, yeah, I got I, kicked I, off the sixth, the yeah. seventh, the eighth. He I never made the it principal. To the trip. He flicked off the. T- oh. It's like so w- when you're falling in love in eighth grade and you have a single mom at home. What was that like? Did your mom, did your mom support you being with a guy in eighth grade? Well, it was kind of funny because my husband as a 14 year old was about 6'1", 196 pounds with a little bit of facial hair. So he didn't look like he was in my grade, first of all. Wow, Michael, he's two feet taller than that's me. That's about the opposite of me. I was about four foot one, no facial hair. Okay. So. so I was like, okay, but he was so cute. And I don't even know if that age, do you have a type, right? But I was just something about him. And he wasn't like this athlete and the star at this point. I mean, we're in eighth grade. Um, but he was just everything. I mean, I was head over heels. I have, I have a scrapbook. From a Band-Aid he wore to, uh, you know, the corsage that I still have dried that's barely a corsage anymore. I mean, I, ch- I kept his chewing gum. Like, I was obsessed with this kid. I was in love with this kid. But we we kicked it off from there and honestly never look back. We ended up breaking up. And this is where the story gets really good. We, I broke up with him our junior year of college. So all that way, it wow. was Steven Landon. That's a long, it's a long time. No, only him? Only him, but here's the thing. You're it's not like, like sucking a dick in the bathroom. <laughs> I know I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I swear. But it's, what the it's fuck just... were you doing, Lauren? <laughs> you never well, know. You never, bitch. I mean, hey, now they're doing that. <laughs> if they tell weren't me doing that. it in Don't like 1992, they're doing it now. But um, yeah. So we so we were Stephen Landon inseparable, truly. And then uh, he went and and got a uh, he he got a full ride to Michigan. And so I stayed and went to school in Florida and um, I would take a Spirit Airline flight, $69, and risk my entire life to go see my boyfriend. But we did the Groundhog Day kind of phone call. I mean, he had practice, he had workouts, he had study table. I was doing this. So it just got kind of got a little bit like, and we'd been together for so long. So I think we ran out of things to talk about and something, thank God I was this mature kind of girl, but I was like, I, if it's meant to be, it's going to work out. And so I broke up with him. Now, at this point, he's the star at Michigan, like probably going to go into the NFL draft. Like it's a it's a thing. I mean, he's a hot ticket. And I literally just threw him to the wolves in Ann Arbor. And I was like, you know what? I hope you find someone that loves you. And I hope it's me. But right now, I think it'd be best if you had your college experience and I had mine. And wow. And my, I remember my girlfriends in my ear because I was always dating. So like going out with them wasn't a thing. We were always doing X, Y, and Z. So they're always like, yeah, break up with them, break up with them. And so I, I, I did. And it was, um, it was, I think, necessary. And now we can talk about it and think like, if we didn't do that, would we still be together? But uh, so we, so we, we went off to college and uh, went back and forth. And then I started working and um he he would try to call and send my parents cards and things like that just to keep up like happy easter you know and i was like i don't think this is breaking up if we're still chatting and so that was that fast forward he uh gets draft he he's getting ready to be drafted and recruited he goes to img to work out with his agent and um he my mom called me one day at lunch and I had this really weird feeling and it's like noon and sh- i call her and i'm like hey what you doing i was like i'm just taking a lunch break and she goes, you're never going to guess who showed up here today. And I said, who? And she said, Steve Hutchinson. Like she had to say his last name. It's only been Stephen Landon. And so uh, I said, no kidding. And so I kind of did a full panic, like, oh, my gosh. And I kind of been keeping up, but really trying to just go out with my girlfriends and live my life. Um, and so he shows up in my office. And I had nannied and babysit for this doctor I was working for. And so they're like, oh, my gosh. Steve's here so the doctor's wife's like putting the makeup on me she's like getting me all ready to go and the doctor I work for was needed an x-ray and the girl was out and I was like I'll take the x-ray and so they're like well just go out with him and I said no you know what I've waited my whole life for this he can wait 10 minutes poor guy's like suit tie roses sweating 
out in the lobby wondering if I'm going to come out or not. And I, I came out there and we walked downstairs and talked. And he's like, we can get engaged. My, I, I called my agent. You can live with me at, at IMG. Like, let's do this thing. I'm like, wait a second. I can't just quit my job and go do this. Like, I think we should get reacquainted. So meanwhile, I end up moving and in. How much distance was this? when you? A year you, and a half okay, we were apart. Okay. And I end up moving in with all these NFL potential players and my husband and IMG outside of Bradenton, Florida. And they worked out. We worked out, went to the beach. I made lunches for all these big guys that all went on to play in the NFL, like Freddie Mitchell. I, I mean, bet they all loved you. I mean, it was just funny. I was just like the girlfriend. I was like, what do you guys want to do today? You know, nothing else to do. And uh, we just kind of rekindled everything. And it was just super, super sweet. But it was one of those kind of fairy tale moments where like Prince Charming shows up and decides that he wants to spend his life with you. And so it was really sweet. And it's one of my favorite stories to tell. And then, you know, he gets drafted and we move out to Seattle and we're not engaged at this point or anything. But of course, it was just kind of a given. And so we uh, we move out there and uh, he had meetings and he came home from his meeting and he's usually I'm learning how to cook, right? Like this is where I get domestic. This is where living with Landon's like coming into play because I grew up with a woman that's basically Martha Stewart. My mom was very much into entertaining. And by this time she had remarried and I, you know, was gifted like two half brother or step brothers rather. And it was just like the Brady Bunch. We had this great little life. And so I'm learning how to be domestic and he comes home from work and he is Johnny on the spot, like on time, five minutes late, something's wrong. And so he calls and um, with his signing bonus, he decided to buy a brand new truck. And so he buys this truck. Nice. And uh, I grew up with brothers and stuff. And I'm like, this isn't right. And he said, I, something's wrong with the steering on it. So can you go in the garage? So I've got the cordless phone. I'm like trying to get all the tools. And I come down to this dirt turn off by our house. And uh, he's, he's standing there with his hands on the hips. And he crawls underneath the truck. And he's like, all right, just turn the wheel, turn the wheel. I'm like, OK. He's like, here, hold this. So it was like a, a bolt and then another bolt. And then the third one was the ring. And I was like, what? And I, you know, in the middle of the, this like dirt turn off on the highway, everyone's driving home from work. Everyone's honking. He's on one knee. And it, it was really sweet because I think going out to dinner and really doing it a traditional engagement, I would have gave it away. But we, we, we did the we, we got engaged and uh, we went to Arby's. Nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's, amazing. That, that's our story. But Arby's I love is, it. It's damn good, by the way. Well, I still have the bolts and. That is so cute. It's With his chewing gum and your corset. Every, yeah, everything in a scrapbook. Do you keep all my... I don't... I mean, what do you want me to keep? Like I don't know. A, locks of my hair. I don't have girl. locks of your hair. I'm sorry. Not anymore. That's when yeah, you're like... I, I didn't go girl. that deep. I feel what? like you had locks of my hair. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I would sneak into your bedroom Yeah, my you chewing gum, just... my bubble tape is in your room. So, so when you're getting engaged or when you're the girlfriend of someone in the NFL mm. and there's all these men around and all this testosterone... And there is infidelity. Mm -hmm. What is oh, that 100%. like for you to actually see behind the curtain? Because you say you're you're making sandwiches for them. You're seeing like, for instance, yes, I I worked at a bar when I was in college, and it was all super wealthy men, and I was able to sort of see behind the curtain of what it looks like when all these men are away from their wives. Yeah. What was that like for you? Sometimes when you're in a pinch, you need a Pillsbury Crescent Roll. Maybe even if you're not in a pinch, Pillsbury is nostalgic. It's iconic. It's one of the best. Zaza pokes Pillsbury's stomach. She wants to watch all the old Pillsbury Doughboy commercials. And Michael really feels like a chef when he's in the kitchen. I'm like a real baker. You are. I mean, he'll make these rolls. He'll do like pepperoni pizza crescent rolls. He'll do rolls and just put jam and butter on them. I've even seen him put peanut butter and maple syrup on these rolls. He gets creative Telling with it. all my secrets. If you need something to add to your weeknight dinner rotation, you can add Pillsbury Crescents. I recently used them on 4th of July. This was so great for the kids. You fill it, you roll it, you bake it. Zaza like sings the patty cake song when we do this. It's so fun. And most of all, it's nostalgic. You can roll your favorite ingredients into a crescent roll. There's tons of like weeknight recipes on their site. And like I said, you just fill, roll, and bake. You can find Pillsbury in the dairy aisle. And you should know that dinner prep for them is always 30 minutes or less. This is also like fun to bake with the kids. I love baking. Find out more weeknight dinner recipes at Pillsbury.com. That's Pillsbury.com. You can find Pillsbury in the dairy aisle. And you should know that dinner prep for them is always 30 minutes or less. This is also like fun to bake with the kids. I love baking. 
Find out more weeknight dinner recipes at pillsbury.com. That's pillsbury.com. And try Michael's maple syrup and peanut butter crescent rolls. They are amazing. It's summertime. Everyone's on the go. Everybody's moving. Everybody's grooving. If there's one thing I cannot leave the house without, that is Athletic Greens. This has become an absolute staple in our health routine. We take it every single day, first thing in the morning. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If there was only one supplement that I could buy, only one, it would be Athletic Greens. And here's why. In one single scoop of Athletic Greens, you have your prebiotic, your probiotic, you have all of your vitamins, you have all your whole food sourced nutrients, you have your adaptogenics. They basically have everything in one simple punch that comes in a simple scoop that you just drop into water. Like I said, I take it every single morning. It does not break the fast. It's keto, it's paleo, no added sugars, gluten-free, all of the good stuff. So many other people are taking Athletic Greens, talking about Athletic Greens. It has become a staple in so many high performers' routine, and I'm telling you, I can see why. If you've been listening to this show for a while now and you haven't yet made the jump, I don't know what else to tell you. This will change your life. It is an incredible product, and you really have nothing to lose because, of course, we have an incredible offer. And here it is. New places, spaces, and especially foods can be hard on our gut. With AG1 Travel Packs, I can trust my body gets high-quality multivitamin, pre- and probiotics, and much more no matter where I am. Now you can get 10 travel packs. Yes, that's 10 travel packs and a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 drops. With your first purchase, go to drinkag1.com skinny. That's drinkag1.com skinny. Check it out. Drinkag1.com skinny. Every morning, my daughter asked me for two things. She asked me for a vitamin and for coconut water. It's like a routine now. And the vitamin that I give her is by Haya. Okay, you guys, these vitamins are so good. I tried them myself. Most children's vitamins have like five grams of sugar and they have like gummy junk and they just are filled with nasty crap, but not Haya. Haya is a pediatrician approved chewable vitamin which is so fun because they come in green, yellow, and pink. And they formulated the vitamin to fill in the most common gaps in a modern child's diet. So they have things like minerals, vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, all different kinds of vitamins that just really help support immunity and energy and concentration. I think this is such a fun way for a child to have a routine and show healthy habits. I'm taking my supplements in the morning. Zaza has hers. You should also know that Haya is non-GMO. It's vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything you can imagine. It's designed for kids of all ages, but the best part about it is it's sent straight to your door. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. You receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com skinny. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash skinny and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. The NFL is a very interesting place. There's a lot of downtime and there's a lot of travel and these guys have money and it's, you know, I mean. And they're in shape. They're in shape. I mean, they're living the dream. I mean, women, it's not so much like the men and the testosterone. It's more the women and the estrogen. (laughs) That it was a very threatening almost place to probably be in if you're not in the right mindset. Because I can imagine feeling super insecure. And I mean, his first NFL game, I was coming from a college mindset. So I'm wearing like jeans, team sweatshirt, like a hat. Like I'm I'm 20 something years old. Like I'm figuring it out. These women are coming down in the coats and the jackets and the whole thing. And I'm like, I do not belong here. Like what in the world? Are you talking about the wives or just the wives, the girlfriends? I mean, here's the thing about the NFL and it's sad, but true. But like the wives are in the first row and the girlfriends are three rows back. No. Oh, yeah. I've been to training camps where, you know, the girlfriends are in a hotel down the street and the wives are there with the kids at the picnic. Nobody knows anything. Now, it wasn't anyone that I knew personally, but you just know it just happens. And, And I'm not like you know, blanket statement to the entire NFL or any professional sport. But I mean, it does get a little bit of a stereotype where you kind of know. And that's always everyone's question. Like, what's it like to be an NFL wife? And I'm like, what's it like to work at the insurance company? I mean, it's the same thing. You know, it's like, I love these women and I respect them. There's some I want to hang out with and some I don't want to hang out with. And I think it's like any other job. Um, but it is interesting, you know, a lot of them are resentful just because I think they gave up whatever career and life they had for their husband to go on, um, and, and, and run with this. But in my mind, 
I was gifted a position and fell in love with a wonderful man that happened to be very good at what he did. And I took that on as my job. So my job became, I'm going to be the best wife. I'm going to keep myself in shape. I'm going to run a great house. I'm going to make some beautiful kids. I just kind of owned it. Instead these are of controversial being like, statements to make these days. Yeah. What? I said, these are controversial statements to make these days. I, it's like very, like more traditional role. Well, here's the thing. I'm a fifties wife at heart. No one can take that away from me. I want a dinner around the table. I don't think there's anything wrong with no, that. No, I don't think there is either. And I think it's honestly like a lost art. I mean, it's just kind of turning into a different thing, but that's me. And that's how I run my life. That's my family dynamic. That's how I continue to, you know, foster a great marriage and raise good kids and, and just keep a very good foundation. Like all I have and all I can control in this world is my house and what happens inside of it. So there's a lot of shit going on in the world, but that's what I can keep close to home. And so I just took that on. That was my job. And I was like, I'm not going to complain about it. There's a million people that trade places with me. Like, I mean, the bitching that would go on about like, oh, I can't believe like he's traveling again and I got to do this. And I was just like, what is wrong with you guys? You know, really? I mean, you're very, you're in a very, you know, you're in a lucky position to have this lifestyle that not everyone has. I mean, money is not everything. Don't get me wrong. To me, I've always said like, my relationship and my family and what Steve and I have is like the cake and like, yeah, there's some icing in there, but sure. at the end of the day, I think what's cool too, it seems to me like as an outsider of your marriage is that you were really there for him when he was blowing up and, and I, I don't know now, but it seems yeah, like yeah. you, you now are traveling, you're traveling here. You're, you know, this yeah. big social media personality. I'm sure he gives you the same respect at oh, this time. It's been like, give and take and i think that's what a marriage is should be built on because we have both been successful in our own right and individually together and we have done like a changing of the guard like he passed the baton to me i mean he retired over 10 years ago and you know i just dug in and never even thought about what i wanted to do because what i wanted to do was what was what was in front of me which was raising my kids learning how to you know have a a beautiful home and a happy home and those are the things I focus on those are my gifts I'm super creative I love to entertain I love paint colors I love cooking like all of those domestic kind of things I just embraced and I was just grateful to be able to stay home with my kids and like create that life because then he could come home after work and the reason I truly believe behind every su successful man is a is a really good woman because there is a reason he was able to do what he did on the field because at home, everything was in control. And so that was my gift to him was to keep shit in check, tight and right. And that way, when he came home, we didn't have any issues. And I also never, ever, and I tell this to women all the time, on my website, I have my marriage rules and they start one through 10, I think. Tell us is. some, tell us some, please. Well, the first one is never say no. Never, uh, you rally. Are you talking about for sex? sex. Yeah. I I'm sorry. completely agree. I say that all the time. You just you and just then, do it. When you get into it, you're gonna like it. We've done <laughs> we've done shows with people, and they don't like when she says that. No, but pe I, people got mad at me because they were saying what do they call it a pick me girl or something. Yeah, a pick me girl. What is it? I never heard. Of it's that. I don't know. But I don't get the concept. It means that like I'm um I'm a, trying to appeal to a man by being like going with the man's oh, vibe. I have a I have a lot of male energy. Like I'm very uh, so I, I, I must be like I have more testosterone than most women. I'm not real no, sure. No, but I never got this concept. It's like listen, I like oh so uh, Lauren and I were talking in the car there and I, and and I think to your point and kind of reinforcing what you're saying. I think outside of the decision to kind of take care of yourself individually and make sure you're an upright person and all that yeah. stuff is good. But I think the most important decision you make in your life is like who you decide to be with. Yeah. Right. Because I know individually I would probably be fine. Lauren be fine. But together we're much more than we would be apart. Right. And, and like I would, there's no way I would have had any of the success I've had personally or professionally or with my family without Lauren, obviously. Sure. And I try to tell all my, my young guy friends mm -hmm. that like think, chasing tail is the is yeah. the end all be i'm like at some point you're gonna want to have this support and system. don't go too long because we have a friend that's like in his 40s yeah, that's dating 18 year olds and i'm like enough 
Yeah, and it's it's hard then, right? Like, because I he's I, like, why are they like this? I'm like, why are they like this? Because they're 18. <laughs> that's why they're like this. Yeah, even the dynamic. You're like, throw them to my son. I, honestly, it's about time. When, I feel like when you pick the right partner, everything feels like together, right? Where you're not just building things on your own. And I, you know, when you're dating yeah. and doing all these things, you're kind of moving in different directions all the time. But no, I mean, I I think it's you know one of the things that has made our marriage successful is we have a great sex life, and like I don't I don't go wanting. I don't right? think I don't what's so bad about not that you think it is but i'm just saying like in general like getting the hate for that like what's wrong with having a great sex life well i if, i think I'm it's sorry, so important just, when it's I, not i there. don't want to marry someone that i don't want to bend over for number one <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to be with someone the rest of my life. Sex is very nice to someone that I'm like, ugh. But let me just say something. You (laughs) again? Let me just say something very honest. If you're at home and the woman you're with is denying these from you, how could you be shocked or upset or surprised if they seek it somewhere else? Men are men. One thousand percent. I think about that all the time. Like, I'm a a lot of times in the man's corner cheering him on because sometimes I'm like, ladies, ladies, ladies come back reel it back in because this is just like let's just think about it here I wake up every day just thinking like I of course think about myself I don't want anyone to think I'm like oh Steve 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 but I do wake up and think every day like how can I make his life better like we're in a partnership we are a good team Mm -hmm. there's going to be good give and take there's going to be sacrifice we've had ups we've had downs we've had the lows of the lows and the highs of the highs but like at the end of the day you have to choose like to love someone when maybe you don't like them that day. Yeah, and I'll tell you this: any guy that's out there being like, "Oh, babe, it's okay. I don't really need." They're lying to you. Yeah, 100%. They're fucking lying to you. They're yes. just saying it because they don't want to have a fight. <laughs> they care. They're mad. They're right. thinking about it. It's just. I mean, it's, I, it's just I, human I, nature. I see men in those type of situations, whether it be someone I know, we know, or another like relationship from afar. And not like I know the answer to what's going on behind closed doors, but there are a lot of things that I'm like, and it has nothing, not always to do with sex or their intimacy or whatever, but just like I look at it and I want to strip it down and be like, I think I kind of see his point. Like, can you just take it down a notch and like you meet and him Lauren halfway? Have, you, you guys have similarities. I feel like probably you're the girl of all, where the guys, your, your husband's friends probably come to you with their frustrations about I, what's... I'm sure, yeah. yeah. And also, I'm just like, let's let's just take the bitch out of it. Like, let's just break it down. And I, I just... I sometimes want to shake some of my friends. Well, it's like, listen, I'm going to be... <laughs> I, this is to maybe bash... It's, we don't need that much time either. Just give us a little bit of time. I, you know? I think, minutes. too, like you need to put out there what you want. So I talk to women all the time and they're like, he never eats me out. And I'm like, <laughs> well, do you give him a blowjob? No, I don't like to do that. Well, uh, uh, well, uh, if if he's never eating you out and you're never giving him a blowjob, what do you want? If, you, you get you what got, you get. Yeah, you got to put it out there. Like, like uh, for me, I'm like blow, like blow my husband. It's my husband. If you're not, if you're not going to do that, then yeah. don't expect it to be reciprocated. Well, and all also the time. let's take that and let's apply that to everything else in our marriage. Yes, if. If I, if I want to be treated, it's like the old saying, like be, treat someone the way you want to be treated. Like if you want him to do things for you, then do things for him. And you also, I think, need to really dig into this love language, which is just like for Steve, it's like acts of service. That means like him loving me is filling my car up with gas and making sure X, Y, and Z and cooking me a beautiful meal. And like he, he loves to take care of us as a family unit. That is his love language. I'm a little more like physical touch. I want to hug. Let's whatever. But I have to remember like, that's how he gives loves and feels love. So I think about like, I'm going to make sure I unload the dishwasher and make sure the coffee pot has water in it before he shuffles out there at 5 30 AM. It's like the little things I think that really keep a marriage going and like apply that to anything and everything. Like if I'm bitching at him about something that I'm not doing for him, then how can I bitch? Yep. A hundred percent. You can apply the blowjob eating out theory to anything. anything. No, but if, if you're if you're not blowing them, don't expect them to eat you out. If you're not filling the fucking coffee pot, don't expect them to fill your goddamn gas tank. Well, I think what it comes down to is like, I, I think the mistake that I see, and especially some, and I'll just speak from the male perspective, some of my guy friends that get older and older and more set in their ways and more particular and more specific, which I think is like a total mess because they only are like, if anything's outside of their specificity, yeah. then they, but like people think they just bring themselves to a relationship and it's like, I need to do exactly what I want to do all mm-hmm. the time without making any co- accommodations yeah. or sacrifices. It's just going to work out and someone's going to love me for who I am. It's just, it's total bullshit. It's not true. Yeah. Like, well, like a marriage honestly is taking a lot of chapters yep. 
and putting them in one book and like hoping it all the story flows. So it's like you've got to be able to edit a little bit of that and put it together. But you have to remember they're coming to the table the way they were raised. I mean, I see the way my husband will raise our kids and the way I raise our kids and how we do it together. I, I the empathy comes back to like I see why you're doing that. Like that was how you were parented X, Y, and Z. So it's just kind of like navigating that. Also, you end up, if you are lucky enough to be married to someone that you love and you have a long relate, a long marriage, you'll be married to three different people. Sure. I mean, listen, we've evolved again. We're about to evolve again. Like we have to grow together. Great point. And so I have to, I have to like kind of check in with myself sometimes, you know, like I, you know, I've had... He's had a career. I've had a career. He's staying home. I stayed at home. I mean, we're just we're doing this all the time. It's a beautiful little dance. And so I, I think I think just sometimes people have to get out of their own way. Yeah. But to your point about growing up, like I grew up, you know, my mom's half Japanese. Time, like my dad was like military, like not a lot of affection and touch. Right. Like, it was just like mm-hmm. fine. Like I, I, I never right. felt like I didn't like sure. I wasn't wanting. But like Lauren's love language is affection and touch. But for me, like that was not like we, we weren't like all huddling yeah. on the couch and like 100%. kumbayaing around the fireplace when I was a kid. Right? <laughs> it was like. It was like, hey, get your shit. We're going in the car. And I was like, See, and so I'm like I, Steve's family. Yeah. So it was like, it was fine. Like I never felt like I wasn't loved. Yeah. It's just, I wasn't like, you know, you were loved my mom wasn't way. like petting my hair and going to sleep. Like, Lauren's doing that. I, I like, want you to pet uh, my hair. But I've had to, like, I've had to adjust myself and understand like that's her yeah. love language. I'm much more like acts of service. Like I feel like if people See, are you're doing, like Steve and Landon. If you there. don't massage my feet every morning, I will go to the foot spa and get two guys on each foot. So, and I'm just putting it out there. Another one that I that is very important is dating your husband. Yeah. Talk about that. It's just, it's just a priority. It's like a doctor's appointment, working out, anything else we got to do. It's just a priority. And I know a lot of times life gets in the way and people are like, I can't go and I can't afford a babysitter. Totally get it. Like we've been at all different stages in our life. And we even getting like a public sub and sitting in a parking lot is a date to me. Like it was just anything. Sometimes when the kids were really little, we'd have to go like, run errands or get diapers and do different stuff. But it was just like the time together. And as that's happening, because I think the other mistake people will make, and I've seen it happen just in some of my mom's friends and stuff. It's like they put so much into their kids and then the kids go off and they wake up one day and they're like, who the hell are you? And I don't want to wake up next to my husband 20 years in when our kids go off and just we put everything into our kids and never continue to feed our marriage and I just I want to have like those are going to be our greatest years in two years who knows what we're going to do you know we're just going to have like this time and we're young enough to like go do things and enjoy our kids and so I think it's very important to invest by the way I think the kids pick up on like I I think they're going to emulate the relationship they see 100% so like if they see you know if they don't see a solid Mm -hmm. affectionate relationship they're gonna grow up and think that that's normal yeah if they don't see you massaging my feet every morning (laughs) towns is not gonna do towns yeah towns he's gonna be he's gonna poor kids gonna be out the window looking at the massage (laughs) parlor with two guys on your feet how do you continue to spice it up i'm sure you get asked this all the time you've been married for Uh, a long time what are what are the ways besides the woo treasure kit that i need (laughs) yeah when you said that it literally said like land it i was like what is this This is like pandora's box (laughs) um Yes, definitely keeping it spicy. You got to try new things. You got to be open minded. I mean, you can stay in the same position and keep riding it out, but things do literally get dull. <laughs> yeah, literally, right? I didn't even mean to say that, but yes. But I think it's, I mean, everything and anything you can try. I mean, toys, different positions, put a wig on. I don't know, do something. Don't look at me. I put a wig on. Lauren made the most awkward stranger. <laughs> we did this like what is it? Sexy, sexy stranger. stranger. Oh my god! What is so a sexy awkward. stranger? We told the story on the show. But I, I'll, I'll, I do remember I'll, hearing that. I, I remember I hearing well, she, okay, on. the sexy stranger. For anyone that wants to do it correctly. Is you go to a place and you pick either like one picks up the other as like a sexy stranger. Lauren booked like one of our Giorgio favorite. Giorgio Baldi. It's a tiny little She restaurant. booked our favorite dinner spot, which is an intimate so spot. Are, like, I and there's a know person them. like if I went like this, I'd hit the next table and this. And she was dressed up in a, and it's a restaurant we go to. <laughs> It's a place we go regularly. So they're like, what are these people doing? And there was no sexy stranger about oh. it. It was like, hey, like you're, my wife's just in a wig in a very awkward setting. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. That's I'm going to so do it funny. again. Okay, so you have one of the most engaged communities that I've ever seen online. 
first of all, I'd like for you to say how you even fell into this. Like you're, you're, it sounds like you're doing all these things at home for your husband. How did you start to sort of pick up a following online? Well, first of all, I had no social media. Uh, my grandmother had Facebook. My kids at the time are two and, you know, four, four probably four or five. And she, they lived away in New York and they wanted to see the kids. And so I was like, I never had my space. I never did any of that stuff. And so she's like, can you get on Facebook so I can see the kids? And I'm like, sure. And then my brother was like, yeah, get on there, get on there. So that's kind of like, I got a Facebook page. And then it kind of started evolving like that. Now, mind you, I am the exact same person I was when I was just staying home with kids or growing up or anything. If anything makes me feel the best is when I'll run into some of my mom's friends and I'm like, you're the same girl that babysat my kids. I'm like, yeah, did you want me to change? Because this is just who I am. I've always just been very authentic with who I am. Um, It's just easier that way when you're pretending to be someone else. It's really exhausting. And so I just always uh, was me. But I, I loved like cooking and figuring out a paint color. I mean, I painted our first laundry room probably eight shades of yellow because I couldn't figure it out. And I learned how to garden and I learned how to, I just, I just really dove into that. I really enjoyed it. Very domestic. Like I said, I grew up with kind of a Martha Stewart-esque woman. A little, Belinda's got a little switch going, but she, it was the lines in the carpet and the the tweezers to put on the Christmas cookie sprinkles. Like she took it to another level. Oh my God, I'm getting tweezers for my sprinkles. (laughs) amazing but I loved her and her home was always so inviting and people always over and I just wanted to emulate that I enjoyed that so much and I'm just such a people person and so my neighbors you know I'm just kind of figuring this all out we're like what's a good recipe I loved what you brought last time or people would start stopping me on the street like where do you get your hair cut and I love your shirt and I'm the girl that in the grocery store would be like here actually it's this and I got here and it was on sale and here's the website like I still do that to this day so all those people that say they don't know where they got their shirt I can't they're not our people no I can't no I bet you know exactly where you got it oh. how much it was and everything oh. so I just am a share over share probably so um I started doing why do, that why do, why do women do that by the way I I've don't always, I honestly don't know like I always you, wondered I've seen what are that you gonna happen. keep a secret it happened to me in I know France. I've seen it I've seen I women said where'd you get your caftan and she goes I don't know <laughs> yes you do Ugh. And I'm sitting there Googling like eyelet casting. I'm like, bitch, I'm going to find where you got Because even, even men and like, we're not the most, fa- like we know where we get our shit, right? Like I like, someone's like, hey, where'd you get that? I'm like, oh, this is like John Elliott. It was yeah. very easy for me to tell you that because I shop because at three just, t-shirt you know. places. I don't know. It's scarcity you know. mindset. I don't, I don't know why they do that, but those are think they're going to be the only one that's in it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly dummies so i started sharing and one thing led to another and i started a, that little facebook page and i remember making this little living with landon like online like making it look i think it had it looked so stupid it was like chevron with like a cursive landon like pink and white and i'm like so 19 or 2000 and whatever so that kind of happened and then steve was playing for the vikings at this time and so everyone I mean, in the Midwest, football is just a big deal. And so the local news station was like, oh, you're so good at like doing a little tailgate spread and everything. You want to come on and do like a little spot. And so I like did that. I'm like, oh, that was fun. And so I just I'm very comfortable around other people and I love sharing that kind of stuff. And so I just started sharing and sharing more and more till I was like, do people really care? Like outside my mom and my sisters. And so it just kind of evolved to that. And the next thing you know, I decided to get Instagram and like we picked up and moved to Nashville and. I'm continuing to do all this throughout, but then something in it and Steve retired and I was like, I really like this. Like, I didn't know you could make money. I didn't know anything about affiliate marketing. I knew literally nothing. LTK. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. And so I got this girl to take some pictures of me and brand and do my logo that it is today. And um, my husband said, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to just go ahead and do it? I mean, I'm home. And I think he was kind of like trying to figure out what he was going to do. He's like, I'm home with the kids. I missed out on that time. Like, if you want to go take this on and be busy doing it, go for it. So I just started doing it. So fast forward, going through the motions. And I remember getting on to reward style at the time or like it to know it, whatever it was. And I started linking. I think the first thing I linked was my cutting board and my salt and pepper shaker. And I like sent it out into the world. And all of a sudden, like people were buying it. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is how this works. Like I had no clue. So in my mind, they had this um, email that came through that said, be invited to the reward style conference or whatever. And I, I was thinking that. like, you know what? I'm going to put that on my goal. In like two years, I'm going to get to the reward style concert conference because you have to have a certain amount of like 
whatever sales or followers or whatever literally three months later from starting this i got the thing that said i was one of the top 100 influencers in the country <laughs> and i was like <laughs> what like it would happen like that it was wild and i was like i don't even know what i'm doing and i'm not even like doing anything like this isn't even work i'm just having fun i'm on here just talking about things that you i must love. be one of their top sales now i don't know you know what's really funny i'm not driven by like money or numbers which is probably a terrible way to think in a business mind but i am just more fulfilled by like knowing i help somebody that's probably well it's probably why you have the engagement you have because i, I think if you go the other route and people you've know you're be. all about the money well, then I just but lived. you've got to be one of the top influencers <laughs> now for reward style i think so it's funny i don't even talk to my rep and no one talks to me i'm just on autopilot doing my thing um but it, but it's kind of funny because i yeah i i I had a I had a unique situation. I wasn't doing this to pay my mortgage. I was l just doing it because it's fun and it's still fun. And when it's not fun anymore, I'm not going to do it anymore. And that's what it is. That's really how it is. So I've kind of been really doing it, doing it for, I think I was like 40 when this happened. So like six years or so. I was doing little bits of it like back in Minnesota, but not until I got to Nashville did I really turn it on. And then next thing you know, it was just like, bam, 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 bam. I, ha I decided to put on my first conference myself. I sold tickets in like 90 seconds to 500 women. I didn't have a venue. I didn't have food. I didn't have anything. I was like, would you guys come? Because I'd meet them in the grocery store or Target and they'd be like, I just love you. Like, you're like my best friend. I didn't know I needed. And I just thank you so much for showing me this Target t-shirt and, and making this dinner that my kids actually eat. And it was just like that all the time. And I was just like so moved. And these women... Um, you said something earlier about like what you put out is what you get back. But truly, I feel like I am. It's a boomerang. Like I am literally just giving away like anything to help these women, whether that's, you know, their marriage, parenting. I mean, those are some of my top questions. A good dinner, paint color for your living room, what you're going to wear on your date night. Like I'm just always a helper. I always have been. And so the fact that it like morphed into something where it's like a brand is kind of wild to me. I mean, it's still like makes me giddy to think that I'm doing something that's really helping people. It's also successful. And um, at one point I had like 22 employees and simple IRAs and all this stuff. I mean, it just really took off crazy. And it's did just, you, you don't have that anymore. You didn't want to, I, go I had a store okay. um, and I winded that down um, because my daughter was about to go to college. And again, I'm doing it because it's fun and it became so taxing and managing people is not fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I love people. I but love it's just, it. <laughs> I really it's love just, it. It's just, it's just a hard. It's just hard. And I just don't know if I'm like cut out to do it or I think I'm a great boss. I'm really fair. I, I honestly have probably not very good boundaries and I get in too deep. Like I just get friendly with everyone and there's no like. It is, it is really challenging. You Very. are good at it though. You don't act like you're, he's, he knows. See, he Carson, knows. what do you think? <laughs> yeah, he knows that's, how that's to the only right answer, keep Carson. church and state. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm, you, you know. know. what it's, know what the problem is when you are, I guess maybe running a team or an organization mm -hmm. is you, it's a, it's a, I don't know if I've ever said this in this way, but it's a little bit lonely in a sense because you don't get to have the same camaraderie that everybody else on the team has. Yeah. Because at some point, there's always the person that has to kind of be like the quote unquote dad in the room mm -hmm. or mom in the room. And you have to kind of like set the standard or kind of like lay the, the foundation of the law. Down. And, it, and, it, and it creates a weird dynamic where like maybe you can't go and do what everybody yeah. else is doing at the happy hour. And it makes it not. But but at the same time, like there has to be somebody that's like at the top yes. that's being responsible. Yes. And so I, I think like sometimes that people get in that position they don't realize like oh maybe it, this is it's not as like it's not like what you see in a movie where like at the top and everyone's just like high-fiving yes because at some point you have to have a tough conversation yes one thing that i have learned in the last two years is the importance of building muscle especially for women and we were lucky enough to have dr shannon the creator of evlo fitness on the show and she just talked to us about how important it is to develop lean muscle mass but not wreck your body. So she has this thing called gentle consistency. And basically what it is, is it's staying consistent, but not being super hard on the body, but also building muscle. So it's way more effective than slamming your body into the ground for a brief period of time and then stopping because you're hurt. 
I'm a huge fan of her method because I think it's great to have something that builds muscle, but also doesn't fry your nervous system. Her workouts are super structured so you know exactly what you're doing and which muscle groups you're working on each day. And she has so much context on her Instagram and story to really make you understand why you're doing what you're doing. So whether you want to work out three or four or five times a week, all you have to do is press play. It's from the comfort of your own home. We lose muscle as we age, so we need to build it. Finding a program that does it without overly stressing your system and body is something rare. Visit evlofitness.com to learn more and try their membership for 30 days with code SKINNY. And no excuses now because Evlo is giving our listeners one free month when you use code SKINNY at checkout. Visit evlofitness.com to learn more and try their membership for 30 days with code SKINNY. Work out smarter, not harder. I'm going to blow your mind on a beauty tip that everyone needs to know about. And that is your shower. What is coming out of your shower head? I learned so much about this on the episode with the VitaClean founders. I like literally my mind was blown. I changed all the shower heads in our house to VitaClean. VitaClean is a triple filtered vitamin C infused aromatherapy shower head that removes toxins and nasties from your shower. So a lot of the water that's coming out of our shower heads are irritating our skin. It's causing acne. It's literally making your hair look dull and your skin. And I think that this is such an underrated beauty tip because everyone is so worried about what they're putting on their skin or in their hair, but they're not actually thinking about the water that they're washing their hair and face with and their legs. It's wild. I think a big part of the reason I was getting a rash on my legs is because the water wasn't filtered. So now all the water in my house is filtered because of VitaClean. You should know they offer six different scents for their vitamin C filters. I think that this is one of the best kept secrets for glowing skin and glossy hair. Go to VitaClean.co today and use code SKINNY at checkout for 20% off. That's VitaClean.co, V-I-T-A-C-L-E-A-N.co to get your new shower head today. Use code SKINNY at checkout for 20% off shower head starter kits. And if you don't like it for any reason, they offer a 30-day money back guarantee. VitaClean.co, code SKINNY. I got better at that, but I was still wanting to have fun and do all the fun stuff like with my team. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't really know where to like cut it off. But I mean, I I mean, we're rolling. We got warehouses. We got people. I'm hiring women to help me run this thing and, and be in charge of it all. And I've gotten shit on and I've gotten ripped off. I mean, it's so much because I had so much going on at the same time that I was like, am I able to do any all of it? Well, what do you mean you've gotten shit on and ripped off? What does that mean? I mean, like I had a warehouse. I had a store. I was sending product out. And just, you know, when you can't be at the warehouse every day and you think you've hired someone to sit at the warehouse right. to make sure, you know, there's just a lot going into it. But I will tell you, at the end of the day, I am so grateful for every single person, good, bad, ugly, every experience, because, man, I have learned more in the last six years than I've learned my entire life. I am still evolving. I'm still figuring it out. And it is you'd think I would have been like, I never want to do that again. That was the worst year. But there's something in it that is really allowing me to see the lesson And I don't know how I came to that, but I'm like, now I'm just a little wiser. I know what to look for. I know that not everyone's great. (laughs) (laughs) But it is, I mean, like it could be one of the most rewarding experiences. I just think it requires somewhat, sometimes of a a little bit of a different mindset because you have to, like one day you're at the happy hour, the next day you're letting someone go. But it's Everyone, hard. You know. It's hard when you're a uh, your I profession is a guy. creative, a creative because well, yeah. you you want to spend your energy towards creating, and then you have to come in and like manage. Yeah. And it's it you it's, you just want to go back to creating kind of. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't. It was getting to the point where I was having to play manager like that and be the bad guy or be the police, and. I was less and less creative. I felt so bogged down that right. I, I, they'd be like, hey, what do you want to do for this launch or whatever? And I'm like, I would sit there. And it was like the first time in my life where I'm like, I don't have a freaking good idea. And I hated that. And I was like that. I just felt the weight of everything else. And I'm like, this isn't because what I Because you're to wasting, do. not wasting, but you're taking your energy yeah. towards doing things that maybe you weren't put here to do. Yeah. Those are not my gifts that self-awareness you you have extreme self-awareness yes I, like even, even through talking you're very self-aware Thank you. why do you think that is I think it happened in the last few years it's so it's it's evolved I, 
Oh yeah. I I am a, I I'm just talk about like being married to another person. Like I am another person now, a better version of myself. I there's more depth there. There's more understanding, there's more forgiveness, there's more empathy. And again, might come with age also, but something has transpired in the universe here that has just made me see things in a whole different way. And I always thought I was very like you mentioned therapy. Has that been oh, I instrumental? Therapy. I love therapy. Yeah, that's my self care. I mean, some people probably go get a massage every week. I, I go like to, to go to spa. therapy <laughs> or the foot spa. When did you John st- and Peter? <laughs> when did you When did you start therapy? Was this always or was this later in life? Um, I started therapy. My first uh, little escapade with therapy was actually when I first got married, because my son, my son, my husband is a um, only child. And I was navigating my relationship with my mother-in-law, also taking on like my new role as a wife and a a stay at home or, you know, like a housewife or whatever you want to call it. And just figuring out his career and all the spotlight and also quitting my job, moving halfway across the country and trying to figure out like, what am I doing? Who am I? And I didn't know what to do with that. And somehow I got the somehow I just came to like, maybe I should go ask for some help. And so I sat down with this guy and he, he, he gave me so many great tools that I continue to pull out of my tool belt of just like, you know, when Steve gets home from work or comes home from something, I'm trying to get dinner on the table. He's like, I was like, I feel like I can't listen to him and I'm trying to give him my undivided attention and stuff. And he's like, well, maybe make the dinner for 15 minutes after he gets home just so you can have that time when he walks through the door. Just like little things like that. And hey, your mother-in-law, she wants to come visit all the time. It's her only son. I get it. But I didn't want to be the bitchy wife. I didn't want it to come between our marriage. And so I needed some tools to navigate how I was going to interact with her and figure this out because we'd known each other a long time and I didn't want to not like her and I didn't want her to not like me. And so I did a lot of work to figure that out and she never knew that until 10 15 years in our marriage but I behind the scenes was like I'm not he didn't even know for six months I was going I just was like I'm gonna figure out how to deal with this so that was my first go and then that really got me through a lot and then probably in the last three years I think and then I was like I'm going this is going to be my thing weekly how often do you go every weekly. week every week mm-hmm. without uh, fail Lorely. Lorely. <laughs> love her um you mentioned grit off air Mm -hmm. what are some of those things that that you think have added grit to your life for sure um I think definitely being raised by a single mom like just watching her even though I didn't know how hard it was now I I can look at that and I see the sacrifice and the things she's done and I can thank her over and over again for giving me that gift. Um, Did you never have a relationship with your father? I just recently this year haven't seen him in nine, ten years. Probably never really had a relationship. So my grandmother um, was ill and I didn't tell anyone I was coming to town. They live in a town in upstate New York, 400 people. Where and in I, New York? They're in upstate New York. They're in Keene, Lake Placid area. My mo- my mother grew up in Batavia, which is oh, okay. right outside Buffalo. Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Uh, This is a little more north. This is almost near Canada. Okay. And so I just got a rental car and I drove there and I went back to like, we lived in a deer camp with no heat and like a picnic table in the middle of like the woods. <laughs> like I just d- wanted to go back as an A lot adult. of people are trying to go to those places now. That's yeah, the hot Yeah, honestly. I mean, it was so like grounding for me but I was like I'm gonna go back here because it was the first time in my life that I looked at myself and thought my father is half of who I am yet I've never even looked at myself and even knew what to look for to find him and I just needed to get centered I needed to go back there I needed to go through like pictures and and be in a familiar spot when I was younger and just go back there even as a wife and a mother, but with no kids and no husband. And I felt like I was nine years old. And w- without prying too much, was this no, like a, your father's, like, was it a choice to not be around? Did him and your mother not get along? My, was it- my mom and him, you know, she, they were young. They met at 18 at a phone booth looking for a party. <laughs> you know, fell in love, very in love. And, you know, he just made some different choices. I'll say that. And I think my mom was like, this isn't the life I want for me or my daughter. And so my grandmother that had passed, 
unbeknownst to him would pack us up week by week grandmother his mother his or? mother okay. um i think she could she had a similar like a broken marriage and i think she could just from the outside see like i want more for you guys and so every week for months and months she packed up a little bit of our stuff and then drove us to the airport one day and never been back yeah and sorry i'm not to interrupt you i just no. trying to get the like i just trying to get the visualization and yeah story. and so we went back so this grandmother truly changed my life and it was one of those things where i almost wanted to go back thank her for knowing that my mom and I deserve something different. And and my dad's not a bad guy. You know what I mean? I he he's remarried. I have two half sisters. Like it it we've had our we've had good nothing has ever been like really bad between our sister my sisters and I, but we we've been on stents where we're like together and chatting and very connected to just years of nothing. It's just been a very interesting thing. I don't know if it's like an out of sight out of the mind. Um, but, but, but my mom remarried and I had a great father figure and I had my grandfather and, and great men in my life. And so I just, I didn't have a void to fill, but there is some trauma there that I'm kind sure. of like picking up on now, but I just needed to go back there, be centered, be a child again, tell her to her face how instrumental she was in changing my life because I wouldn't be sitting where I am today had she not driven us to the airport. It's just like things like that I think you start to go back into as you're getting older. And so it was a very like healing thing. I just sat next to on a bench seat with my dad in a truck and asked him like, I want your side of the story. I only know my mom's side or what I've gathered over the years, but I really want to know like who you are, who was Kevin at 19, you know, the choices that you made. And he, we've openly talked about what those choices are. And that's just what he made. It just wasn't the life for my mom and I. And so we went off to do our own thing. But there's there's just something in there and like finding where the grit came from and all these events that unfolded in my life to get me to this point. And, you know, it just, it wasn't always easy. I worked when I was really young to just put groceries on the table. Like I always just had a really big work ethic. I had to, it was like a survival thing. You know what I mean? And, and just knowing like the comfort food of the cereal, where that came from, you know, all these little kind of things. Um, but I'm always just had this energy and light about me that I just want to pour onto other people. And that something through all of that. And there's just so much more to the story is just like made me want to shine above it all. And so it's just like my way of like giving is just like helping and bringing the positivity to so many things and I just have always looked at everything's you know the glass is half I mean is half full right half full (laughs) as kind of new parents I mean Zaz is three Towns is one what are some of your parenting tips that you think have looking back on you raising your kids that you just like love I believe that you can be a parent and you can be a friend I think a lot of people are like, you can only be the parent. You got to do this. It's always a lesson, da, 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 da. Or you can just go have a blast with your kids and drink with them or whatever, you know, just like be off the rails with them. But I do think there's like a happy medium of those two things. Um, I've also given it to them straight. I've always, always, it's black or white. Like, here's what's going to happen. If you jump off the playground, you're going to fall and there's going to be blood. Like, jump. But just letting you know what the what the what what's gonna happen, the repercussions of all of that. So really, really honest. Also talking about things and observations going around. We have something called little like life lessons, and we've numbered them. We're probably on number like three hundred and sixty-eight. I don't remember where we left off the last time. But now my kids are driving, so it's like I don't get that car time with them. But we would sit, and there would could be a homeless man on the side of the road, or there could be something that happened at school, and we would just openly talk about all of that and they would ask so many great questions at that age and your kids are going to be coming into that time and it was just like very honest open like just so they could see the world outside of this little bubble that we live in you know like people live differently they see differently they do differently they make choices this is the the outcome and so we just kept a very open dialogue we danced a lot in the kitchen with wooden spoons like we just were always having fun And my husband and I ended up kind of splitting our parenting into like good cop, bad cop. And so my husband's kind of will lay down the law and then I'll come up a little bit to the bedroom and soften things. And it's just been a very, it's worked really well for us. And he's still very soft, big teddy bear, but it's just, it's, I mean, it seems like it's worked well. (laughs) It's, it's worked well. So that's why I'm just so curious about your tips for marriage and parenting. Are there things you tell your kids that are maybe isn't, not as popular now and in common culture that you know especially with a daughter that you maybe tell her that 
just to maybe guard her against, you know, the world she's going into? Yeah, for sure. I, Lily's very independent, always has been from a toddler. She'd arch her back to get off my lap. She'd take her books and go to the corner. She's very strong willed. She's much more like Steve. Um, you know, she wants the trophy. She wants to win. She's super competitive. I'm over here. Uh, Luke's got a little edge now. I can see it kind of coming out of me. Just turned 16, but he's more like me. Like, is everybody having a good time? You know, like we're just a little more not as competitive. I want everyone to win, you know, but like navigating all of that. She, uh, both of my kids, I'm really glad my girl is like going to cut somebody and doesn't give an F. She doesn't. Sounds She'll be breaking <laughs> hearts and, you know, I feel like I could see my son crying on my bed, but not her. You know what I mean? Like she's just a, she's a very strong willed, always has been. But I, I've tried to now, I have to be quiet. I have to sit back. Like now they're 18, they've left the house. She's in college, going to be a sophomore. And I have to like, I, I sprinkle in my mom isms. But I have to, like, now I hope I've taught her everything she needs when she walked through that door. And so now I'm kind of sitting back. But she comes to me all the time still, which is feels well, think, really good. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, she asks she me a lot of advice now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And we are tight, real tight. So cute. Yeah, I, can't, I can't maybe relate to because we're still young parents, but I, I remember like my relationship with my parents. I always felt like I could bring them anything. Yes. And it, it was helpful. Like I never really got into drugs or stuff crazy because yeah. like my dad would be like, yo, you can go and do a bunch of coke, but like this is going to happen and it's probably laced yeah. with baby laxatives yeah. and it sucks now. <laughs> and back when in the 60s, it was the good shit and you're having the bad. So yeah. like, well, I don't want to do all that. But he was very like yeah. black and white to your point. And I always felt like if I you know drank too much or if I did something stupid, like yep. they were the first phone call. I didn't oh, feel yeah. like I had to go hide and, and run around. Yeah, same. I, I, I'm like, listen, I will not be mad. I will not judge you. Like you're going to make mistakes. Like this home right now is a safety net. Make them here make them here and then we'll figure it out. And I was like, there's only a couple things that could really, I'm a, not ruin your life, but really change your life. It's like, do drugs, get hooked, die, right? <laughs> get pregnant, whatever, when you're not ready for that. I mean, those are things that are going to change your life that you just can't undo. Um, but but uh, yeah, I think just keeping the communication is key. That is the biggest, biggest thing. Being a place that and someone that they can come to and not feel judged for sure. And I think having a good time and sometimes you got to get down on their level. I know right now you're like probably on the floor getting down to their level, but at some point you're going to have to go back to the teenage Lauren and the teenage Michael and just kind and of I hope I can go there. back to the teenage Michael. <laughs> I can't wait to you're go about back to, to the teenage see it. Michael. If our kids or anything like we were teenagers, we're in some deep shit. I mean, listen, and the other thing is you weren't born yesterday. Like you're, they're navigating all this, even like the friend drama and all of it. And I'm just like, we've all been there, but they got to go through it. Yeah. I want to talk about beauty, plastic surgery. We were talking off air before we go. I mean, you have to come on again because there's so many questions that I could ask you. But you mentioned fat transfer implants. Tell yes. us about your experience with that for anyone who's out there that wants to do the same thing. Yes. So you and I were talking like I had implants when I was in college. So I'm like 19 or so. And they were ginormous, I felt like. Like I just, I, I'm a tall girl with like broad shoulders. And this guy that I had gone to, Peter Kleiner, his name was, back in, in Virginia, um, he he did like the red skin cheerleader. So I think that's basically what I ended up looking like. And it's like the 2000s, right? So um, I, I never loved them, but I did breastfeed two kids. And as age and time went on, they started to kind of like sag and like feel like a real boob. And I'm like, OK, it's not bad. Then I read an article about like black mold and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I should probably get these things out or what do I do? And so um, I ended up doing that and I got a really, really bad job in Nashville. Like I look like Frankenstein, like they, the guy had cut me and it, one was lopsided and I was like, well, that wasn't really what I was going for. So I sat on that for years and years, probably five years. And Steve's like, it's fine. I'm like, I know. But when I take my shirt off and look in the mirror, like it's not fine. Honestly, this is not what this should look like. And so I found Dr. Unger, Jacob Unger in Nashville, and he is a gift, y'all. He is just so talented, studied all over the world, loves to have you looking conservative and just like you, just a better version of you. And so I went in there. I was like, listen, I want them a little smaller. I also like this needs to be fixed X, Y, and Z. And tell me more about this fat transfer. And so we ended up doing that. So we replaced them much smaller and I did like a fat transfer 
Um, and I've never been happier. Like this is the way I should have looked the whole time. But um, yeah, so we ended up kind of, that was the part I felt like hurt the most or the recovery was the worst was that like you're in a sausage casing for like a good three months just to keep the swelling down well, that's that compression wear is like a nightmare yeah it really is something else especially it's hot in Nashville oh. too. <laughs> but um I went in and did that and he made a small incision in my bikini line and went in and, and took some fat from my inner thighs and on my sides and I'm pretty straight wasted like I was telling you but I kind of have a little more of a waistline which was nice that was like a bonus honestly at six in the morning he was just going to take some from my thighs. And of course, we're coming off the holidays. It's like January 10th. And I'm like, actually, I had a great holidays. Lots of cookies, all kinds of fun stuff. And I was like, he's like, I can take a little there. I'm like, perfect. And so he did. And I love the results. I love how natural. I just feel more like me. I actually can see the side of my body, which is something I've never seen before. I think they were just so offset. And so he just was like, that's this what thing. happens when you go yeah. too big. They widen out. Yeah. I just felt like top heavy, honestly. Yeah, it, they like when you go too big, anyone who's getting implants, they get wider and wider and wider. So the trick is, is I think it's really smart is to go a little bit smaller. And then it sounds like you mixed it with a fat transfer. Yeah, which makes really you well. look just more natural up top and what people can see, you know, in your bathing suit or in your clothes. Everything is very just like moves around, just feels really natural. Um, so that was a game changer and I just Steve's feel some getting more another <laughs> version of you he's getting all different this kinds of versions of wife. You. personalities tits I mean I it's know. it's it's I a know. bag of fun you know that's how I keep it uh going that's keep, how I keep it interesting I get you know alterations Lauren yeah. just wakes up with a new personality every day I was like here we go new well that's me too I'm over here acting like I'm a gem I'm probably not the well I also think like always keep them guessing like I never want to sometimes I'll have like all this information to share but I'll spread the information out <laughs> over dates like I'll save stuff. I'll be like, mm, I'm going to talk about that subject on our next day. That's you good. have to like constantly keep it yeah. interesting. You do. You do. Because then it gets just kind of like. Meh. Yeah. You never want to be <laughs> sick. Have you ever gone to a restaurant? Everyone has. And you see the couple that's literally on their phone or not talking. Yes. The whole time. I, I never, never want to be that couple. That. I, no. I, I don't want to be married if I'm that no. couple. 100%. It's awkward too because I always feel like those people are eavesdropping. They're probably like, what are they doing? What are they talking ear about? Ear horn. Lauren, call, Lauren and I call it ear horn. We're like, what are these <laughs> people? You know, like the people that got the big ear horn up next to them. Like, like they're not talking to each other. And we're being pretty loud over here. Well, like Steve they have and to I, be. when we go on our date nights, like we'll get through whatever we're talking about. And one of the things we like to do, and we love to play this on vacation, is like life inspectors. And so we'll be just like sitting there and the couple's like over there. And I'm like, we'll just literally play out their whole life. So we're like, okay, that's Bill and Tammy. And so he sells insurance and she works at the whatever and like whatever. And what do you, oh, and then we like mimic what they're talking about. And we laugh so hard. Yeah. It's just so funny because it's like, I don't know. You got to laugh. That's, that's another how you part keep of marriage. It spicy. If that's not a fucking great tip, I don't know yeah. what is. I mean, it's fun. It's fun. And when you're sitting in your beach chair and you're just like watching people walk by, I'm like, oh, here comes Bill. Not Bill's wife either, is it? You know? <laughs> Bill's, Bill's girlfriend's sitting three, <laughs> three ways back. back. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, you got to Landon, I think you're incredible. You oh. have been such a supporter of the ice roller and pink balls. Thank you so much for I'm ice obsessed with that. No, thank you thank for you. like creating something that's real. Like I've had an ice roller or two, but that baby oh, nice. stays cold and, and here's the thing, talking about just like influencing or whatever this is, like truly I will share only what I love and I want to buy it myself, use it myself, everything so I can stand behind it because I've really earned the trust of these women and that thing is legit. I gave it to every person I know for Christmas with some really cute pajamas and I'm talking like everyone. It's a good gift. It's the greatest gift and yep. everyone is obsessed with it. One of my friends, I gave it to her for Christmas and she ends, she sells it in her store now. So she ended up doing wholesale with you guys. Oh, nice. She's like, it's crazy. But um, the, everyone loves it. Everyone's messaging back after they got it. And, you know, thank you so much for always like being sweet to my people and give them a little code. But it's been great. I love that thing. Honestly, th that means so much coming from you. It's such a big compliment. I know how serious you are about what you share. So thank you. Of course. Where can everyone support what you're doing by your products? Follow you on Instagram, listen to your podcast, all the things. Yeah. So um, it's basically living with Landon across every channel. So livingwithlandon.com, living with Landon on Instagram. And I think that's where the fun is truly. Um, when I got started with this, Instagram stories had come out and that one day I remember like, oh, you turn the camera around, you actually talk to somebody. So I was like, hey, this is what I'm doing today. And that has been the biggest jump 
in whatever this is. I think people really get, it's like FaceTiming a best friend. You know, half the time I don't have a bra on, I have a zit, I burnt the dinner, I was late picking up my kids. But that to me is, that's the good stuff. Like that's what's going on in everyone's life. And the very scripted, curated, beautiful pictures. I'm like, for me, that's just not where it's at because I just don't think perfection is pretty and it's just life. And I think we're all in it kind of together. And I think that's just where I have a good time. That's where we laugh. That's where we act stupid. That's where I don't say the right things. That's where I get everything wrong. You know, it's just where it's at. Living with Landon, I think you're such a great follow too, especially for this audience. I'm sure we have very, it's it's simpatico. I would definitely go recommend, recommend following Landon. Go look at her 10 marriage rules. I'm going to print it out (laughs) and put it on Michael's forehead. Yes. Um, and Landon also, I want to know, is there any, like uh, any website where people can buy stuff from you? Is that coming? You know, I, I had that with the store and I've got this idea that I dreamt up in December that I've been sitting on my agent went on maternity leave and she comes back in July and I'm like if I still really feel as passionate about it as the day it came to me because I have like two hours of voice memo and like video and all these notes that I haven't even looked at again then that will be something that I'll be super excited about. We need a book. Uh, well, that has nine chapters already written. Okay, we need a book. <laughs> but, and we also need, I feel like you need like an e com that's like all your favorite picks. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have merch and all that fun stuff. I mean, it's been a minute. I mean, we've got coffee mugs with stupid things that I say on them. And it's been it's been fun. But yeah, I, I mean, honestly, through livingwithlandon.com, all that stuff lives there. Okay. And you um, can come back on the podcast anytime. Maybe next to. time we interview you and your husband together and hear oh, yeah. all, all the tips from a him and her perspective. Yes. That would be really fun. Yeah, because we be really w- do share some oh. similarities. Oh, I, we when we're in Nashville next time, no, we're yeah, interviewing you again. You are such a great podcast guest. We haven't guest. been over there in a while, so we'll a, make a trip. real breath of fresh air. Aww. It's so nice to have someone on the podcast who really can hold their own. So thank Aww. you. Thank you. Well, that means a lot coming from you. <laughs>